Courtney's, this is Ms. Saffron, and I'm going to be going over European colonialization in Southeast Asia and Oceania. So before I begin, this is a topic that we've gone over several times in our other regions that we've studied. Um, Europeans have had a large impact around the world as they've created colonies, spread their culture, spread their language, their religion, um, you name it. And so this is not a new topic, um, but understanding how it impacts uh, Southeast Asia and Oceania is going to be important for you to know. So when you go into the Nearpod, there is a little Kahoot that you can play. Um, had we been doing this face to face, um, you would have played the Kahoot to see what all you know. Um, but we're going to not do that. Um, so first we're looking at a map of Southeast Asia and how uh, the Europeans have colonized different parts of Southeast Asia. So you can look at the map and you can see where the British were at. Um, you can see where the Dutch were at, the Spanish, the French, and whatnot. Um, the only country in Southeast Asia that was not colonized was Thailand. Um, they were the only ones. Everybody else had some uh, kind of colony created and some type of European uh, impact. This area is called the Dutch East Indies. It was huge in trading um, and especially that idea of mercantilism where we're getting raw materials and sending them back to Europe to make final products and then sending the final products throughout the world to sell is going to be huge in this area. As far as Oceania is concerned, you can see that the British are going to have a large impact on Australia and New Zealand. And then when we get to the little islands, um, you're going to see that there's a large impact of French as well as Spanish, um, even American. I mean, we came in and took over some of the islands too um, during our imperialism time. So what does colonization of Southeast Asia and Oceania look like? Well, Europeans are first going to start arriving in the 1500s. And the main goal is to obtain wealth. It's to get those raw materials to make money. Um, not all of these areas are set up as permanent colonies. Um, some are basically where they would gain control, get the raw materials, and they would leave. Um, and that would allow the uh, natives in those areas to then kind of start controlling their own country. Some changes that the Europeans brought um, were central governments. They were able to stabilize the region politically. They forced uh, to produce commodities to help European, European economy. So a commodity is a good or maybe a natural resource that can be used to make money. Um, and the Europeans were famous at creating plantations, making people work so that they could extract those raw materials to make money. Um, and then last big change, it's going to spark nationalism and unite against the Europeans. So what that means is that the people in this region, they did not want to be ruled by the Europeans. They wanted their own country or what is called self-determination or self-determinism, uh, where they rule themselves under their own government. Um, and so it's going to spark a lot of nationalism to get rid of the Europeans in this area. So talking about independence in Southeast Asia and Oceania, um, during World War II, so this is the early 1940s, the country of Japan is actually really aggressive in controlling land. So Japan is way up here and they are going to get land in China, Indochina or Southeast Asia, the Philippines, Indonesia, almost to Australia. They also got territory in uh, Micronesia as well. So the Japanese were working their way down into Oceania to gain power. And part of it is to gain those resources, but then also the more land you have, the more powerful you look, especially in a time of war. After World War II, Europeans tried to regain control, but they didn't have a lot of money. So after a major war happens, war is expensive, and the Europeans are focused on building their countries back up in Europe. They're, they're not focused on their colonies. They're not focused on sending money on the other side of the world to protect their colonies. Um, and so they really didn't have a whole lot of money. And so places like Vietnam and Laos and Cambodia, like they were easily um, taken over by their native uh, people because the Europeans had no interest in 
protecting them because they were worried about building up their economies on their own. Many countries fought wars for independence. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of fighting in this area to get rid of the Europeans and to create that independence. And some islands are still under European control. So there's still colonies in uh, the Pacific Ocean that are still under European control. There are territories of England, territories of France, territories of even the United States um, that we have for military reasons. Um, it could be strategic reasons why we have those areas just to kind of keep peace and keep control. So had we been in class, um, we would have filled out this chart using some matching cards. Um, but instead, I'm going to go over each of these countries because this is what will be on one of your quizzes um, and how those colonies um, eventually are going to create independence, but also how the Europeans are going to impact those areas. So first, starting with the Philippines, uh, the Philippine Islands. Um, so the colonizers of the Philippines are going to be both the Spanish and the United States. Uh, so reasons for occupation, U.S. won the Philippines in the Spanish-American War. You're going to learn about this in U.S. history, but that happened in 1898, where there was a change of power between the Spanish and the United States. And that was one of the territories that we ended up winning because we won that war. Uh, we made the Philippines become a military base uh, during the Cold War. And this was useful during the Korean and Vietnam War because we had a military base there. Um, we were able to get supplies to those war-torn areas in Asia. So the impacts of uh, the colonizers, um, the United States, we're going to build roads, hospitals, school systems, and other forms of infrastructure in the Philippines. And then we're also going to exploit the economy um, and help the Philippines build their economy, but then also kind of use them as cheap labor, as uh, cheap resources, um, to make final products for us. Moving on to the next country, you have Thailand. They were the only country not uh, colonized. They were independent. Um, so their kings promoted uh, their area as neutral zone between the French and British powers. So they are what we consider a buffer zone. So they're kind of like in between these two rival powers. Um, so because they were surrounded by all these European colonies, they did have some positives with that. Um, they got to modernize early and do it their way and not be forced into doing it their way. Um, they started school systems, reformed their legal systems, reorganized uh, their government, built railroads, and eventually ended slavery in their country. Um, they escaped social turmoil, um, racist treatment, and economic explo exploitation. So because they were the country, they didn't have to worry about um, the Europeans setting any guidelines or standards in their country. They got to do it their way. Um, the next country is Vietnam. So Vietnam is a hot spot, and part of it is where it's located at, right there um, on the coastline of Indochina. So Vietnam was colonized by the French, the Japanese, then the French again, and then eventually the United States, and then eventually it became its own country. Um, so, larger share of the overseas market, that is the main reason. It's literally the location of where Vietnam is at is what makes it such a hot spot. Um, so, when they were ruled under the French, they had to learn French culture, uh, took over government bureaucracy, uh, rice became the major focus on uh, the land, and that became a major raw material that was extracted, okay? Um, but because of the wars between uh, the French and the natives, Japan trying to take over, and then eventually the U.S. Uh, trying to prevent the spread of communism in Vietnam, war is going to devastate this area um, pretty much. All right, the next country is Cambodia. Cambodia is going to be colonized by France. Um, in the 1840s to 1950s. And you can notice that France kind of pulls out of all these countries in the 1950s. Right after World War II, they just say, I'm done. They just don't have time to, to deal with these countries anymore. And then eventually, uh, Cambodia is going to be defeated by Vietnam uh, later on after the Vietnam War. So the main reason for colonization is expansion and agricultural exports. The, pot, or the impacts, the economy grew on cash crops and goods. 
roads, harbors, and rail systems, linked areas, and improved communication, transportation, education, health, and sanitation. So Cambodia got kind of a, an upgrade of infrastructure. Cultural change with immigrants, uh, racial and religious clashes. So there's going to be a lot of cultural uh, clashes because of the different groups that are coming into Cambodia. And then the last country that we're looking at is Indonesia. They're going to be first colonized by the Dutch. And again, it's a location factor. You know, Indonesia has got a lot of islands that have a lot of natural resources. Some of those natural resources are oil, um, tin, rubber, fruits, vegetables, those kind of things. The Japanese are then eventually going to take over Indonesia uh, during World War II, and that's where they almost make it to Australia uh, during that time period. So the impacts of colonization in Indonesia is that there's going to be a social class system where the Dutch, so if you're European, you are up at the top of that system, you were considered wealthy, educated, top of society, and then as you work your way down uh, to mixed races and then eventually down to natives, uh, you were at the bottom of the totem pole. Uh, Indonesia is the world's largest Islamic population. So the religion of Islam is going to spread into Indonesia and catch very quickly. And it is um, one of the most populous countries, Islamic countries in the world today. And then the Dutch are going to resist native education and civil service. So when the Dutch were colonizing Indonesia, they used Indonesia purely for economic reasons. They didn't want people to be educated. They just wanted them to work and be productive. And that's it. Um, and again, it's to make that money. Okay, um, so we're not going to go through all the data here, but this is just showing how because of col uh, colonialization, what some um, factors like life expectancy is either going to be high or low in, in these areas. Um, you can see kind of the trend in France, Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia that life expectancy is going up um, in some of those countries. And again, I'm not going to go too much into all of this. Um, again, those same countries, you can see France uh, per capita income is very, very high. Where your colonies, there is an uh, increasing trend, but it's not as high as France is. Okay, when we look at the Dutch or the Netherlands compared to Indonesia's life expectancy, again, there's a positive trend in both countries, but Indonesia has a much bigger population and also uh, life expectancy is not as high as the Dutch. When we look at the Netherlands and Indonesia's per capita income, so this is how much money the average person makes, you can see that if you live in the Netherlands or if you're Dutch, you're making a lot more money than if you are from Indonesia. And then looking at uh, comparing United Kingdom, Singapore, Myanmar, Malaysia, Burundi, and Thailand, life expectancy you can definitely see is going up in those areas. So these could, this is like the data of how colonialization impacts an area. Um, you can definitely see where uh, per capita income is going up quite a bit, especially Singapore right here. Um, and that is literally where it's located at is along a trade route. It's going to develop very, very quickly. One of the richest countries in this area. Um, and then comparing United Kingdom with Australia and New Zealand, again, very similar trends. Uh, to their colonizer when it comes to life expectancy. And then same thing with uh, per capita income, very common trend uh, with those. And then last, uh, Spain and the United States and the Philippines, their life expectancy, you can kind of see some dips right here with the Philippines. Uh, but again, um, the trend is going up. So this is just showing how the data can impact that over time. Um, and then showing Spain, United States, and the Philippines per capita income. Again, there's a big disparity there um, when we come to the economic side of it. So that is your colonization uh, notes. I would definitely look at the chart that we went over um, so that you have a better understanding of the impacts um, and study the specific places. But uh, yeah, this will be for your quiz next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.